Hey folks, welcome back. Um, so now we have Dr. Yao from Smartit, uh, which is a data science uh, training firm here in Singapore. And uh, he'll be going, uh, we're giving us a tour of um, what it takes to go beyond the uh, rule based channels. Alright, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for giving me a chance to uh, um, talk about this topic. Uh, Maybe you can adjust the volume a bit, getting a lot of feedback. Um. Anyway, uh, so let's get started. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, how to go beyond rule-based chatbots. And uh, in the first place, what's so wrong about rule-based chatbots and all that? Um, so obviously, uh, when you talked about chatbots, the, the keyword uh, intelligent actually comes to mind and uh, it's always about intelligent chatbots but I think at the moment we are not uh, really meeting that kind of expectations yeah um, and I, I don't think uh, I don't think this is the, 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 the state of the art at the moment and that's what I'm saying um, because if you look at today's chatbots are they really intelligent and when we say intelligent, what do we uh, mean by intelligent? Okay, because when, we, when a human user actually feels that it's intelligent, it doesn't really mean it's intelligent. I think there are many ways that a developer, a chatbot developer behind the scene can actually uh, uh, tweak the bot such that it looks intelligent but actually it's not. So uh, there are many ways uh, that, that uh, a developer can really make it look intelligent, okay? Because um, one of the main things is that um, these days, um, the current state of the chatbot actually doesn't really uh, reflect the real intelligence behind it if you, if you look at it. Okay, so, okay, let me, let me just get used to this system. I have too many wires around me. Okay. Yes, yeah, so even if we feel that the chatbot is intelligent, behind the scenes, it may be a dumb bot. Okay, so this is what, uh, uh, what we are make doing at the moment. Okay, even if a chatbot, uh, for example, if you know uh, the famous, uh, or, um, maybe if you're not local, maybe you don't know. Uh, for locals, uh, you may know a chatbot, a messenger chatbot called Bus Uncle. Okay, it looks intelligent and it's very colloquial, speaks English and very jovial. But is it truly intelligent or is it rule-based? This is something that uh, we need to uh, actually uh, figure out, you know. So the, the, that kind of chatbots may feel and look intelligent, but behind the scenes is really not exactly uh, the kind of generative chatbots that we are looking at. The other thing is uh, how do we quantify intelligence, right? Because um, of course, uh, most people in, in the machine learning world will say Turing test, right? Turing test is... Um, the very famous test where um, whether, whether um, a human user can tell whether the, 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 the thing that it's chatting to, uh, is it really a human or is it really a bot that is uh, giving the replies, right? So if, if the bot is able to make the human user feel that um, the bot is actually a human, then uh, the, the bot has passed the, has passed the Turing test, right? But um, that is just uh, actually a very qualitative test, right? You can't, you can't change, um, you can't, you can't uh, make Turing test into a quantitative test. It's just, is it human or is it not human? So it's too qualitative. So that's, an, uh, that, so that's another problem about measuring intelligence. We, we can't really put a number to the level of intelligence that a bot has. Okay, um, the other thing is that, um, what does intelligent really mean? Does intelligent just uh, means that uh, it's able to give you a very uh, humorous answer. Is humor a measure of intelligence? Um, for information, actually, humor can be coded into it. You can code humorous uh, responses beforehand, right? But um, to the end user, it may feel that, oh, wow, this is so humorous and therefore it's intelligent. But it's not true. It's not true. It's all hard coded. Okay, so um, why are we so interested in this? Because uh, chatbots is just a personification of an underlying problem. Okay, this underlying problem is actually understanding of languages. And this is, uh, as stated here, the holy grail 
of machine learning. This is something that we have uh, actually yet to crack. Um, we are starting to see some results, but not totally at the moment. Okay, and this remains uh, a challenge, um, but we will see uh, what approaches are there. First, uh, let me show you this uh, hierarchical chart. Um, so chatbots are actually categorized into uh, several categories or several types. First one is uh, rule-based bots. Um, that is the most dumb kind of bots. It's really hard-coded. Everything is hard-coded. Humor is hard-coded. Um, wheat is hard-coded. Uh, uh, information is hard-coded. Everything is hard-coded. Okay, rule-based. There's, no, there's no intelligence at all. Then there is another type uh, that is uh, actually uh, surfacing. Um, that is uh, machine learning based bots. Okay, under machine learning based bots, there are actually retrieval based bots and uh, generative bots. Okay, those are actually uh, um, semi intelligent or becoming more and more intelligent. So that's something that I will talk about mostly about this uh, in this talk. Um, but let's uh, talk about the rule based bots first and what's the problem with rule based bots, right? Uh, for those of you who have not uh, written anything um, for chatbots or has not created a chatbot in your life, this is what you do in a rule-based chatbot. Uh, obviously, this is a diagrammatic uh, illustration of what a chatbot looks like, a rule-based chatbot looks like in, behind the scenes. So it's so small that you can't even see what's happening. For your information, this, this whole tree-like structure is actually the rules that are encoded in a rule-based chatbot. So you can see, just like a decision tree, right? So if the human user says something, it goes to this branch. If the human user says something else, it goes to another branch. And you do see that actually all the responses, including what images are shown, um, what, uh, what sentences are displayed to the user as a response, and which branch it goes to are, are totally rule-based. And the, you, you do see the amount of effort required just to draw up this tree, right? Because without this tree, your rule-based chatbot cannot exist. So what do you do before you create a rule-based chatbot? You actually have to sit down and draw this entire tree from the beginning to the end up to the exact precise node. Every single node must be pre-planned before you even start coding. Otherwise, you, 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 you'll be in a big mess, right? And, even, and, and it's even worse if you don't pre-plan this before you code, right? Can you imagine you code halfway and then all of a sudden, there's a new branch, and then this new branch can expand into a big monster. Um, but actually, in reality, sometimes it happens because your client somebody uh, wants to include some features that uh, takes the entire new branch, and that's where everything gets a little bit messy. Um, you do see, OK, um, because just now the diagram is so small, I, I, I will give you a screenshot of uh, how it actually looks like zoomed in. So let's say this is a, a, a bot that recommends some purchases. There is a, uh, so the human actually, uh, human response actually gave a certain brand or a certain model for that product. And uh, so the bot will say, if there is a known brand, it says, perfect, these are the available models for that brand, blah, blah, blah. Option one, two, three, four, five. And then there are five more options. All these are hard coded because this is under a rule based chatbot. And then the other thing is, uh, if, the, if the human responds, by saying that I actually um, have a brand, um, I want, I'm interested in a brand, but uh, you do realize that actually this, this company actually doesn't carry it. It says that I don't have that model, check out this one, da 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 da. So it's all hard coded beforehand. There is absolutely no intelligence whatsoever. Nothing is generated on the fly. It just is already known. It's memorizing this entire thing. OK, so um, this is a, a list of uh, problems with the human chatbot, uh, not uh, rule-based chatbots. OK, um, first one is obviously rigid. It can only respond to hard-coded questions. The other thing about uh, rigid um, um, rule-based chatbots is that um, you know, the human needs to ask the question in a specific way with specific keywords. If the human sways a bit out of it and, or does not use a certain keyword or rephrases it or use synonyms, um, a rule-based chatbot is totally dumb and will just freak out and give you errors. Okay? Or uh, something like, I do not understand, let me hand over to the human, something like that. Okay? And in that case, it fails elegantly. In some chatbots, it doesn't even fail elegantly, it just says, I don't understand you. Uh, and that's it. Okay? And the other thing is, as I already mentioned, it doesn't handle free text very well. And uh, you do realize that actually humans like to test the chatbots. 
they always do small talk. How are you? Why did the chicken cross the road? Uh, how, uh, what's your age? Are you male or female? Um, uh, where were you born? Uh, what's your name? And all the kind of small talk. So when a, uh, when a rule-based chatbot meets such humans, which is actually very common, um, it just breaks down. It has a nervous breakdown. It doesn't understand what all this small talk is all about. Okay? And then um, the other thing is, even if, even if the human user actually asks the exact question in the exact way in the, in the cor using the correct words, okay? Uh, the board, the rule-based chatbot can only give you hard-coded replies. These days, it's slightly better because during the hard-coding process, they actually give you, uh, the coder actually can give you uh, 5 to 10 randomized, pre-coded answers. So if you try it 10 times or you try it 20 times, you might start to see repeated answers that you have seen before. Okay, so again, this is another technique to make it look intelligent by coding more answers than necessary, such that at any one time, you'll just randomly pick one of the 10 answers, thinking that the human will believe that this is intelligently gen generated. But if you have asked the same question again and again and again, you will start to see the repeated answers. And that is also an indication that this bot is actually rule-based. Um, I already said just now um, that uh, you know that tree that you saw just now, a gigantic tree, it can be even larger. Um, it is actually very laborious. A lot of human time and effort is required to write up and draw up the entire tree from scratch. It's a lot. And the other thing is that what if, what if you need to change certain structures inside that tree? Let's say you need to have you need to chop out a branch and, and insert another way of branching, then the entire tree entri entire tree is disrupted. Okay, and uh, obviously there's a lot of information that's encoded inside that tree, and because there's so much information encoded inside that tree, if you need to update it, it's very tedious, and because it's very tedious, your board, your knowledge base inside that tree might become outdated very quickly in a rule-based chatbot, right? Okay, so let's go on. Um, now we are ex investigating more on the machine learning based chatbots, the, the left side one, retrieval based chatbots. Okay, so what's, what's that? Um, okay, so retrieval based chatbots, it's actually semi uh, rule based, okay? Um, it is actually the current state of the art. Uh, of course, there are some people trying generative ones, but a large majority of chatbots are actually retrieval based. So what it means is that they're actually, uh, just like the rule-based chatbots, there are predefined responses already pre-coded in. So if the user says something like this, it will say something like that. If you say something like something else, then you will, you will respond with a different set of um, uh, responses. So there, um, it is still hard-coded, but it's not so uh, fussy about how the user asks the question. Um, as in, like, even if the user uses a slightly different keyword, uh, rephrased, uh, using synonyms, the, the retrieval-based bots might be able to still answer correctly. Okay, so there's some fuzziness allowed and there's some leeway allowed compared to a rule-based chatbot. So this is uh, retrieval-based because uh, it's actually retrieving the correct responses. Okay, so this is all dependent on the input and the context, yeah? And uh, how this is done is basically behind the scenes, there's some machine learning classifiers um, that are uh, invoked whenever an uh, input is received. Okay, so all these things are actually pre-trained as well. So a lot of uh, uh, um, um, available plug and play um, APIs uh, are, are using this approach, wheat.ai, uh, I think owned by Facebook, lewis.ai owned by Microsoft, uh, Dialogflow, uh, previously API.ai owned by Google, right? Uh, so all they do is basically classify all the uh, human responses or what they call utterances into this class, into that class, and then uh, it will do uh, the responses accordingly. Let me show you a more specific example. So um, let's say utterances is what the human says. Okay, this second column here, what is the status of my whatever order? What is the status of order number, blah, blah, blah? Uh, tell me about the shipping cost. What is the price of this shipping? Uh, how much does it cost to ship from where to where? Okay, so these are the human utterances, right? So here, 
track order status, right? So you can say it two ways. You can even say it 10,000 ways, right? So what you do is basically you hand code, type in all these 10,000 ways of asking about track order status, and then say that, okay, these 10,000 ways is actually all talking about track order status. And then the, 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 the machine learning behind the scenes learns that these 10,000 ways of uttering it belongs to this class called track order status, right? And then within that, um, the algorithm is also, also able to pick up entities, uh, and this is called the order number. And uh, once it's able to classify the utterances into a certain class, if, it's certain, if it equals to a certain class A, it's uh, able to do this action. If it's equals to a certain class B, it's able to do this second action. Right? So it's actually not that intelligent, but slightly better than rule-based because you do not have to hard code every single question. Okay? There is some leeway, there's a slight uh, machine learning um, pattern recognition thing here based on the human utterances. So the rule-based, I mean, uh, retrieval-based chatbots are actually better than rule-based chatbots, but uh, there's still quite a lot of encoding involved because you need to also hand code the utterances, okay? Um, so retrieval-based, um, this is a workflow of how retrieval-based chatbots work. So this is a presentation layer. This is uh, exactly what the human sees when they chat with a chatbot, either through Facebook Messenger, Slack, um, Alexa, Echo, Cortana, uh, Home Assistant, Google Home Assistant, whatever, right? So this is the front end. And then there's a messaging back end that links to, that links to the intelligence part. And this machine learning la layer usually involves uh, natural language processing together with natural language understanding. Okay, so once it's able to um, fit that in, it will decide, okay, which category or which uh, intent it is in. Okay, if the intent is to do certain things, it will, it will generate or take action accordingly. If it's, uh, if it's supposed to respond in a certain way, then you uh, port the result to uh, NLG, which is a natural language generator, which means that uh, it, it composes the human language, the human sentence in correct grammar and spelling and all that. So after that, it comes back with the human sentence and push it back to the user. Okay, in the back end, there's usually a data layer. This data layer is uh, usually a, a database or a data warehouse of some sorts, such that you can check, the, the, for example, the, uh, the parts number, the, 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 the delivery number, order number, and all that. So this is uh, basically where a retrieval-based chatbots plug in. Um, this is how the architecture is uh, for retrieval-based chatbots. Now, uh, retrieval-based chatbots uh, are not just uh, based on machine learning. Um, there is actually a very interesting um, bot called LSA bot, and this, uh, this was published quite some time ago. But um, what it does is basically it, does, uh, it, it uses a latent semantic analysis, LSA. Latent semantic analysis is basically this. It's trying to capture uh, the meaning and the concepts embedded in the words rather than for the keywords. Right? So it's actually much better if you can understand the semantics of the human uh, sentence rather than the exact keywords. Right? If you are able to capture the semantics, you don't really care about what words the human use. So what it is is that uh, it will convert the, um, the human user's input into a vector. And behind the scenes, it has a knowledge base of vectors pre-computed, right? So you have a knowledge base of vectors and you have a human input vector. So what you do is basically take, the, take the, your, your human's, uh, human response vector, compare it with your knowledge base of vectors, and then find the angle between these two vectors, right? And from there, we can ca calculate the cosine similarity between these two vectors. Okay, once you get the cosine similarity score, that is basically the score of the approximation of this sentence to your known knowledge base. For example, if, uh, if the human says, uh, how are you? So basically, if your knowledge base has something similar, these two vectors will have a very high similarity score, and based on that, it's going to match to a how are you equivalent in your knowledge base. And in your knowledge base, you already coded something like if 
if uh, the logic will be something like if you say how are you, uh, the, the, the bot will say I'm fine. Right? So it's basically uh, another way of uh, doing matching rather than just uh, multi-class classification as I mentioned before. So latent semantic analysis is another, another way apart from multi-class classification. Right, so this goes beyond keyword, keyword matching. Uh, if you are interested, you can visit the GitHub. Uh, they have uh, implementation there. And this is a published paper. Right, so this is how uh, I was describing it. Okay, so a large corpus, it, uh, you convert the large corpus into a, a co-occurrence co matrix. You transform it to get frequency counts. You decompose it into k uh, dimensions. You take the cosine similarity and then you get a similarity score. So, uh, so it seems that uh, actually retrieval based bots are actually quite good, right? Since, since uh, it, it has the best of both worlds, it's not totally dumb, and you still can have some control over it, and it doesn't really look for keywords. Um, actually, uh, it, it, it's not without its problems. Uh, so you can see that uh, you need to hard code predetermined intents and entities. If you remember just now, you have to key in all the different ways of saying one intent, right? Okay, and uh, so this is one problem. The other one is it's not able to handle unknown intents. So things that is not inside the intent, it's not able to handle. Okay, and then it's dependent on the training data set. It's extremely laborious. And for some services like uh, those .ai APIs, right, um, they, are, they actually set a number of uh, intents that you can put in. So it's not unlimited. Okay, so once you reach, let's say, 10,000, you're gone. Okay, so generative bots. Okay, so um, generative bots are different. They actually generate the responses on the fly. It is not hard-coded. And this is uh, actually, I think, the future, but this is a difficult problem. And uh, usually it's using a RNN based uh, method and deep learning. Okay, so usually we'll use this architecture many to many. Okay, and so uh, in summary, this is how it works. What the bot, the human asks, what is intelligence? There's some neural, uh, neural network magic, and then out comes the answer. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more complicated than that, right? But um, you do realize that this is uh, supposedly generated. It's not hard-coded. It's generated on the fly. And uh, there are actually two main ways, SIG to SIG and GANs. SIG to SIG is like this. You, you put the human user input, encode it, encode it. you put a, put a transfer it to a state, and then you decode it, and then it will put an output. Now, are you free tomorrow is the input. This is the encoding part. And after converting it to a uh, top vector, the hidden layer is actually passed to the decoder. And uh, from the start, it will, put, it will predict as yes as the first word. And this yes is put to the next one, to the next node. And uh, the next word is predicted as what's, and so on and so forth. So yes, what's up is generated on the fly. This is usually via LSTMs and um, RNNs. OK? Um, now the latest one, uh, just, uh, this paper was just published November last year. Uh, it's actually using generative uh, adversarial networks. Uh, it was just invented um, by uh, Yen Goodfellow in 2014. So three years after invention, someone used it for bots. Yeah? So what it does is basically um, there is a generator that tries to generate responses. Okay, and then there's a discriminator that tries to decide whether this is generated by a human or this is generated by the generator. So, okay, so they will fight, uh, the generator and the discriminator will fight against each other to uh, increasingly, like a tug of war, improve each other. So they will get better and better and better between uh, the both of them. So you start to see that um, this kind of GAN architecture is also trying to uh, come into the chatbot space. Okay. Um, so I think uh, machine learning uh, people will know Andrew Ng. Um, just going to quote this last sentence here. Okay, it says that actually deep learning is not a cure-all. Uh, one example of something deep learning cannot do is to have a meaningful conversation. Okay, and um, what is the problem with generative bots? It's basically this. Um, it's dependent on corpus. Okay, it needs to be very large corpus, and it's very prone to errors. It's a closed domain because uh, it depends on what corpus you put in. If you put in, uh, say, training about logistics, it only knows about logistics, okay? 
and it's very difficult to do an open, uh, open domain case. Okay, so a summary. Um, so my title is uh, going uh, beyond uh, rule-based chatbots, right? Uh, so I suggested to you that uh, apart from rule-based chatbots, there's retriever-based models, generative models, okay? And uh, at the moment, the large majority of production systems are actually retriever-based models, okay? Or a hybrid of rule-based and retriever-based models, two in one. But the future will obviously be generative models, but we are not quite there yet. Okay, so if you really, really need to get a chatbot out today or your boss asks you to do one, uh, my recommendation is you will use a retriever-based model. Okay, so that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. What is the most clever bot you have come across? And it's just in the hybrid Okay, so the clever bot that uh, you do uh, want to try is actually uh, Mizuku. Uh, if I can get out of this, um, yes. So Mizuku is uh, actually a very nice uh, uh, intelligent bot. It's, yes, Mizuku.com. Okay, so uh, uh, no, I'm not trying to use Flash. Sorry. Um, so the the thing is, this this bot is not it's not engineered to be a closed domain bot. It's actually engineered to be an open domain small chat chit chat bot. Okay, it chit chats with you. We can chat. Uh, you can chat anything. No, it's a different technology. Um, Yeah, so you can, you can chat with uh, her or it for a very, very long time. I think at least half an hour, you will not be bored. You seldom see, you seldom see uh, repeats and uh, it's very good for chit chat. So at the moment, uh, I think this is, it has won several uh, Turing test contests uh, three times in a row. So you can, uh, you can imagine how good it is to be able to win so many times in a row. Okay, so... Um, I think if there's any other questions, I will handle it offline. Yeah. What is the technology behind it? The technology behind it is actually a mix of uh, several technologies. So it's able to query some back-end databases. It's also, um, I think it's not totally generative. It's definitely not generative looking at the technology. Um, there is some XML technology involved. Okay, so basically what they did is they collected a huge corpus of uh, responses and questions and then they just hard-coded a lot, a lot of it. But you do not really feel that it is hard-coded because there's such a huge corpus behind it. You can try it, you can try chatting with it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you.